Jim Crow, the sequel by June Jordan. An angry black woman on the subject of the angry white man. We didn't always need affirmative action. When we broke this crazy land into farms, when we planted and harvested the crops, when we dug into the earth for water, when we carried that water into the big house, kitchens and bedrooms, when we built that big house, when we fed and clothed other people's children with food we cooked and served to other people's children, wearing the garments that we fitted and we sewed together, when we hacked and hauled huge trees for lumber and fuel, when we washed and polished the chandeliers, when we bleached and pressed the linens purchased by blood profits from our daily forced laborings, when we lived under the whip and in between the cuffle and chains, when we watched our babies sold away from us, when we lost our men to anybody's highest bidder, when slavery defined our days and our prayers and our night times of no rest, then we did not need affirmative action. Like two-legged livestock, we cost the boss man $315 or $675. So he provided our keep like two-legged livestock penned into the parched periphery of very grand plantation life. We did not need affirmative action. No, we needed freedom. We needed overthrow, revolution, and a holy fire to purify the air. But for 200 years, this crazy land, the law, and the bullets behind the law continued to affirm the gospel of God-given white supremacy. For 200 years, the law and the bullets at, behind the law and the money and the politics behind the bullets behind the law affirmed the gospel of God-given white supremacy, God-given male white supremacy, and neither the Emancipation Proclamation nor the Civil War nor one constitutional amendment after another could bring about a yielding of the followers of that gospel to the beauty of our human face. Justice don't mean nothing to hateful hearts. And so 